How's everybody doing? My name is Chase Johnson Lynch, and welcome to the Community Podcast here on Big Condo Online. Please like and subscribe, ring the bell, as they often say nowadays, and everything, because we're about to swim into the digital pool of filmmaking with uh, my guest, my lovely guest, Joanne Kushner. How you doing, Joanne? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Now, I know I know your uh, husband and everything. He's been on my show before and everything, and everybody heard of the inimitable Barry Kushner, but it's not about him. It's about you, because you've been working on a project for the past couple of years now, and it's, it seems to be rising from strength to strength, um, and that project is called Screen Life. Mm-hmm. And so just for us and our audience, can you just tell us a little bit more about Screen Life and, you know, about who's involved and um, what its intentions are before you get into what's coming up for Screen Life? Okay, so Screen Life was, um, was founded by um, my business partner, Timor beckman Better, who is a, a very successful um film director um he his past films have included wanted uh, uh abraham day lincoln watch. oh night watch day watch yeah great ones um abraham lincoln vampire, vampire hunter. slayer yeah yeah vampire hunter, hunter get it right, uh, yeah, hurt get you. It right. Okay. <laughs> um so so timor and i had a conversation um after his first screen life film about the format, about the changes in the film industry, about how new technology was was opening doors for for people who wouldn't normally have access to the industry, and he um, went on to develop the format. First film he made was um, was Unfriended. Second one was Unfriended Dark Web, and third one was um, Searching. So he's made. Three really successful films, and right and now, and searching is with John Cho, yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. famous actor, and everything people just say Harold and Kumar, but still, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, searching was made in 2018. And um, what has happened with the format and with the recognition is that um, critics didn't really like it mm. when it when they first started with Unfriended, thought it was a bit gimmicky, thought yeah. it was gonna disappear. However, um, the films that we make keep on winning audience awards. So we won the audience award in Sundance 2018. We won the audience award in, in South by Southwest 2019 with Profile, which is a brilliant film that Timor, Timor directed. Uh, Profile's the only film, the sc- only fr- screen life film that Timor has directed. Um, and it is very, very good. Um, the others, he's worked with young um, young creatives to uh, to produce and direct their first films. So Searchin was uh, Anish, Anish Chiganti. It was his first feature film. Uh, we've got another one which is called um, Our Hashtag J, which was released at Sundance this year. Um, and all, and we've got one coming up that's going to be uh, produced in Liverpool, which is called Life Hack by a young um, director that we we um, started working with after a BFI pitching session. So, uh, so the format is relatively new to the UK. However, it's not new to the rest of the world. It's just taken us a little bit of time to catch up. Well, I mean, it's interesting because I remember, you know, as a filmmaker myself, you know, uh, you know, I remember that it was about mm, three or four years ago that I consciously realized that, you know what, things are going to change, you know, not just because of the internet, but you know, it's like uh, when you make, like, especially when you make, like, local films and stuff like that, it's like there's got to be a different way of doing these things. And, you know, um, so I wanted to move into social media, but I didn't move into the way you guys have done. But I can understand why Timor and yourself feel, realize that this is a way forward because as you described it to me is that you said it's kind of like a digital footprint version of storytelling. You know, and when everybody is so glued into their phones and their tablets and everything, you know, you can't even unjack them in. You know, remember Free Jack? You can't even unjack them in. So this seemed to be really like a good thing. I mean, let's forget about Quibi because Quibi didn't work for people. But (laughs) this seems like a really good um, opportunity that you're talking about. And the fact that you're um, 
um, actively exploring young people as creators in these projects, mm. right? I mean, like, is it because that they are so glued in? Well, it is. I mean, it's it's like what we were talking about earlier. You know, we we as as older creatives, um, you know, were introduced to the possibilities in our twenties, mm-hmm. maybe thirties. Um, younger younger creatives were clued into these things at a very early age. So a lot of a lot of children can find their way around mm-hmm. a digital device by the oh, time yeah. that they get to school. A lot of a lot of children will play with with their uh, digital devices and not play with dolls anymore. So exactly. the, the, you're, you're in, we're in a very very different place, and and society has changed through the you know the the um, explosion of new technology, if you like. Uh, but we are definitely wired differently. To, oh, yeah. to the younger generations because, of course, their life does play out on screens. Mm-hmm. Now, you were saying about these past directors who have been winning these audience awards and all of that, uh, that they are younger people that have gone through your pitching sessions, so to speak. Like you mentioned, like you have BFI pitching sessions mm-hmm. and stuff, and specifically with like 16 to 19-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Now, this is, sounds like a fantastic opportunity. You know, because you're doing it here in Liverpool, aren't you? Yeah. Well, we've got a couple of things coming up in Liverpool. We've got a Screen Life Accelerator course, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. and that is going to start on the 25th of October. And the idea for the Screen Life Accelerator course Mm -hmm. is to open... Um, open the doors to the emerging industry in our city. So we have, um, there's been a lot of investment into film over the last couple of years, um, and lots and lots of film productions happening in Liverpool. However, we are a little bit behind in developing the workforce to be able to take up them opportunities as they come in. So Screen Life is a new format that will... The, the Screen Life Accelerator is about exploring new opportunities for film through um, digital storytelling and actually transferring skills that you already have but don't necessarily um, link to the industry as it is. As an example for that, um, I'm thinking hairdressers. You know, we need we need people who can do hair. We need people who can do makeup. We need people who can do costume. So we've got people who dressmakers and makeup artists and hairdressers who do their job daily, but wouldn't necessarily recognize their skill fitting within the now, the job opportunities that are coming in. Now, I mean, how does that fit in with screen life? Because, like, on the one hand, is is that um, in teaching, you know. Filmmaking the young people, I'm always um, hard pressed into training them that it's more than just a director when mm-hmm. it comes to films, mm-hmm. right? So, like, especially when you want to get in, you know, entry level, whatever. There's so many different opportunities, as you're just saying. Like, you might be a hairdresser, but you could go on and uh, uh, um, doing um, that stuff on set, you know, catering or you know, all that kind of thing, but. With Screen Life, are, are you just, like, uh, focusing on the creating of the story? So Screen Life gives you the opportunity to, um, to, create, a, to create a film at a minimal cost. Mm. So when we talk about filmmaking, people think about big cameras, they think about monitors, sound equipment, and the cost that comes with that is what actually makes it more difficult for people to enter the industry. So with Screen Life, it's a much... The the production is... There isn't a huge footprint for it, so everything's digital. So the cameras that we use will be will be, um, you know, a GoPro on, on a mobile phone, on a digital device whether it be a a tablet whether it be a desktop you know Mm -hmm. so so all of these things are uh, make make things much more accessible and we will make a number of proof of concepts so a number of short films through these courses where you will need a number of skills to be able to 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 produce these things so it will be above and below the line um, mm-hmm. roles that you will So play. obviously you still need to have like the hair and makeup being done on yeah, your actors yeah, when yeah. you do your projects. I yeah. get I get what you're saying and everything. Um so I mean let me just ask you like uh to give us an an, an example. I mean you mentioned searching but 
uh, these new films, uh, like our hashtag J and Life Hack, which was also made in Liverpool. Uh, is that has Life Hack been done yet? Life Hack has not been done yet. Oh, so again, but our hashtag J has been done. That's been done, and that was that was at Sundance. I think that won Best Edit. Mm. This year. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, well, it is because of course the, there's a whole load of roles that are changing. Screen life, um, screen life. There's there's one or two roles, like especially in the art department, that doesn't even have a name yet. Wow. Because it's a it's very very different way of of doing things. Like our hashtag J won best edit because the editor is is like the director. So mm. the director and the editor has to work very, very closely oh, yeah. because of the because of the the interfaces that will need making, because of the direction of the mouse, you know. But there are there's an awful lot of things that we use in in the format which creates tension and suspense. Oh yeah. Um and fear and and you know, happiness and everything else, bouncing balls, emojis, all of them things. So the edit is very, very important to the whole process and works more or less hand in glove with the director. That's a little bit different to mm. the way that it normally works. So of course, your director will have a really close relationship with the editor when it's in the suite. However, before the editor needs to be more or less with the director through every through every creative decision that he makes to make sure that you can get that working in the in the um in the edit suite so yeah well i remember you were saying like uh when i was asking you about it you were telling me how uh how involved is timor uh in this program because you were telling me about um in some of your uh, pitching sessions you know, like he was actually inspired by one of the ideas, wasn't he? And everything, and like he worked with uh, one of the uh, young filmmakers or storytellers, as you would say. And yeah, stuff. so like the, how involved is he? So he's very involved. So he is. He's. We work together. Which we. Um, he's, he's. He's. He's here in Liverpool right now. No, he's not Hello, here in Liverpool. But <laughs> however, he could be. He could be here in Liverpool on Zoom, and that's that's as close. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? It's like he's there. Yeah. He's he's part of the daily process because, of course, um, Timor Timor is a well respected film director. Yeah. So so he can he can go to Sony with something and say this will work exactly in in, in a very different way to the way. I can do that because, of course, he has a track record. He's a he's a, he's very successful commercially, and of course, that's what the studios are. Well, over over the period of time, I think you said it's like about eight weeks, isn't it? So it's like over the period of time, he can understand which one is kind of like a good idea because you did mention some really powerful collaborative partners. Uh, you know, uh, hit me hit me with that name list. You know, drop it like it's hot. Oh, so Netflix, Lionsgate, Universal, Snapchat. We have a we have a slate of five with Universal at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've got five films. Um, which are which are getting two of them are already going into production. There's another three, um, that are being developed. Um, Lionsgate, we work we're talking to all the time about different things that we're doing here. Mm -hmm. um, then we've got Pathé. We we have um, we have very strong links with a lot of the platforms that are producing. Well, speaking content. of yeah, well, speaking of platforms, I mean, you know, it must. Uh, would you say that Screen Life is going even from strength to strength because of the streaming platforms? Because a lot of the uh, networks are so desperate for content. Would you say that there's more opportunities on the streaming platforms as well? Um, well, there is. There is a. We do live in a content hungry world. Ooh, I like that content. However, hungry. you can't. No one's gonna buy stuff that doesn't really work. Mm. You know, and and that doesn't have a track record in in producing things. So producers and directors, um, of producers. Producers of content are are key to getting your work through the door. Yeah, you know. So so Timor, as an example, because of the track record that he has, people are open to have conversations about what he he wants to move forward through our through our collaboration, through our work together. Um. So you know, we do live in a content hungry world. However, it does have to be. 
it does have to be good enough to be able to develop and produce through through the work you know through our company yeah no exactly i mean like uh <clears throat> you know i mean i was only saying streaming platforms because i mean everybody out there is watching you know streaming streamers all the time and they're they're so content heavy uh that you always get those like uh first first uh, uh series you know on a streaming platform because it's long form storytelling you know what I mean, and um, but it's it, people are hungry. People are hungry. So let's talk about this now. When you were talking about the BFI, as far as the pitching session was concerned, basically one of the main things you wanted to um, let people know about, especially over here in Liverpool, is is that on October twenty fifth, you are doing this um, thing at the BME, which uh, is not just for sixteen and nineteen, but now sixteen plus. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so w- we are we are collaborating with the Taurus Foundation and Cobalt Housing um, to uh, to open the doors to the industry for people who wouldn't normally have access. So we're using 16 because there are a lot of young people who do have really, really good s- digital storytelling skills because, of course, these skills have been developed over, over a period of time and... and the difference between me and and young people of today is like I had to go to college and university to learn how to you know make a great photograph. Yeah. My my history, you know, my my background is in photography, um, and I I went and I learned composition and lighting and everything else to be able to make a great picture. Yeah, um, that could tell a story. However, we've got young people who are doing that already, so. They know how to compose an image. They know how to light an image. They know how to make that image really interesting. Um, so, so the the basis of of digital storytelling is already there. So it's just about honing in on them skills and then and then developing um, their ability to tell a story for a bigger platform, if you like. Um, and then you've got older people who. Who again? You who have transferable skills that you could that you could fit into the the industry, but also who haven't had the opportunity to develop their filmmaking talents because yeah. because the the money just hasn't been there for them to do it. So, so it's open. The first course, the the cohort of twelve, is open to any age, basically. And then we are doing. So it'll be like intergenerational, or. Yeah. Yeah. Because basically, it's still them coming up individually with concepts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and not necessarily needing to be the driver of a concept, but saying I've had this idea that there may be a director in the room who will go, I can, I know what to do there, you know. So, yeah. so it's about it's about being part of a creative team to develop a brainstorm. Well, no, a little bit more than a brainstorm. Mm-hmm. It's it's a uh, it's. There will be a number of proof of concepts that will be developed during this course. So short films will be made that we can then present to the platforms yeah. and and you know go on to develop the ideas. Yeah, and then, I mean, like basically, and what's great is is that you know um, you know you have a track record of doing that, all these audience awards and everything else like that. But also too is is that screen life is more than just here. Because you were telling me that you have offices internationally, mm-hmm. all right. So again, drop it like a thought. Like yeah. where, where, where is Green Life also? So we have a, we have a, an office in Moscow. We have an office in LA. We have an office in India. We have an office in South Korea. We have an office in China. All Screen Life. Y- yeah, yeah. Basilevs is the film company, the production company. That's Basilevs. Uh huh. Would you believe I heard it? <laughs> I should have. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, Basilevs is Timor's film production company. Right, well, I heard of it. <laughs> and then Screen Life is is a, an arm of uh. that production company. So we haven't stopped making films, traditional films. So there's still lots of films in production through our film production companies. Company Screen Life is another arm to that. Mm. So it's a di- screen life's a different format. It's a different way of making film. It's a, 
it's a it's a way that you know it makes it more accessible to new creatives. So, th- just as an example, we have a film that will go into production in January, which is called Life Hack. Um, that will be Ronan Corrigan's first feature film. We we don't envisage Ronan making screen life films forever. We envisage Ronan developing his ability to direct film using screen life as a vehicle to to make his first feature. Now, what's interesting about that is because it's like, um, you know, um, looking at the examples of what were made before and, and, and what you talk about it, this digital footprint storytelling. You know, I'm really, I don't know if our audience is like really trying to wrap their head around that, right? You know, like, what is a screen life film? Is it the fact that you have, because I said it's utilizing social media films, and you said no. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, is it the fact that um, utilizing smaller devices, like, as you said, GoPros and and, and phones? Yeah. Because that is a a thing that people are doing. You know, like, so can you just kind of, like, like, you gave an example of, like, on Snapchat, one of our young uh you know, uh, interns are in here, you know, and he's still on his phone. I just love it how he could think he could do this while being on his phone. But uh, <laughs> you pointed out, he's on Snapchat, and you pointed out that Screen Life had did a project called Dead of Night. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what, what so, that entails? So, of course, with, um, we, you know, you know, if you think about the, the younger audience, the, the younger creatives, the this is how they live their lives through the through a digital device. So, mm-hmm. so I would imagine that he's multitasking. So we'll be oh looking yeah. at his phone as well as listening to what we're doing, and yes. because that is what that and that's my point about being wired differently. Mm. So, so for me, multitasking is doing you know a number of things um, manually. He's doing a number of things <laughs> yeah. digitally. So, um, so a screen life film. Is is not necessarily about social media. It's not about talking heads. It is about a di- you know a digital footprint that tells the story. Mm. So it's through the point of view of your one protagonist, your protagonist, through their digital device. Got so uh, you know an example of um, a digit a, a screen life film in comparison with a traditional film that I use is, um, if you think about the story Widows, right, there's a, you know, the film Widows? Yeah. Well, well there's is been... Is that the one about the wives whose husbands were in a mob and they died and everything like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. So Widows, um, I remember watching the first version of Widows when I was when I was younger, and then they'd done a remake of it. Oh, okay. Right? So the remake, and, and again, it's the same story. It's just told in a little bit of a different way. However... The one of the widows has to build a relationship. They're, they're going to break into this bank. They're, you know, they're going. It's in a building. They need to find a way to um, to get into the the safe. So they need the blueprints to the building. So one of the widows builds a relationship with the architect of the of the building, and she steals the blueprints mm. manually. Now, if you was to tell that story today, she wouldn't have to build the relationship with the architect because all of that blueprint would be online anyway. So yeah. she'd just do a little bit of research, and there it is. Yeah, yeah, in clone his phone or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but not not even that. She'd just do a little bit of research on the building, and she would see there it is. There, there is the build. There's the blueprint. Your life is online. <laughs> From the Every, moment you are in the sonogram, <laughs> of course, of course. So, so the the digital footprint, as as we call it, yeah, is about finding this information and and telling the story through your digital device. Wow. Um, if you think about a Beyonce concert as an example, and you know, nobody watches the concert; they just like film it. Film, <laughs> of course, they do. So, so there's you know maybe thirty thousand people in an audience. Mm-hmm. 20,000 people filming it. Mm-hmm. There's 20,000 different stories about different going. Different as well. Well, of course, but, uh, but about going to the Beyonce concert. So mm. everybody had a different experience on the way. Everybody's wow. having a different experience there. However, they've all got the same story playing out on their digital device. So 
So there's many different creative ways that you can tell a story through a digital device. Yeah. See, look at that. I'm already, my mind is already racing because I've already pitched an idea about House Party, but then I just found out by our young intern that House Party is now dead. You've heard it here first. <laughs> Party is ended. But there's still a story as both me and Joanne agree. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just think it's all fascinating, though, um, Joanne. I mean, the screen life and the screen life opportunity, which because, like as you said, it gives uh, people the opportunity to get their film funded. Um, what about the course? Is the course free that they have to, the or the accelerated yeah, course that they no, go the, on? Yeah, it is. It's free. It's, the, it's no cost to to anybody outside of the housing associations who funded it. So yeah. like I said, it's about Foundation. your imagination people. So, I mean, yeah. it's an opportunity that you need to take advantage of. So how can they take advantage of this opportunity? John? So we have, um, a, a website, which is, um, screenlifeuk.com. So there is a, a form on there that you can fill in, or you will also find my email address on mm -hmm. that website. And you will also find a phone number where you can contact us. Um, and there's also um, the Screen Life site as well, where you'll find us. Screen Life Liverpool um, is is what you're looking for. And find us through through that website or through the number. So, I mean, like, um, what about your skill set to participate in the project? I mean, can you come in raw? Or, like, how uh, about your selection? I mean, like, uh, can you be turned down? Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing that will will lead to you being turned down is the fact that there'll be no, you know, there's no places left. So. Dun, dun, dun. Time's running out, people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you need to just realize. Time is running out. Because um, we are talking about uh, next week. So uh, so by the time this airs and stuff, we will put this out, you know, of course, um, earlier before then. But um, it is one of those opportunities that I asked Joanne to come in to talk about because, you know, instead of like just trying to contact different people and everything, it's just a Screen life is just a way of reaching everyone <laughs> <laughs> all at once and everything. Um, but um, again, look, you know, Dead of Night never gave us any money, but, you know, I'm curious to check it out, even though I don't go near Snapchat. I'll just ask my young man. So, uh, uh, Jay, Dead of Night, good? Yeah. Okay, see, look at that. <laughs> he gives us one word answers. <laughs> I just love him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> As you say, Joe, he multitasks. Um, <laughs> uh, last thing I ask you, because we are coming to the end, is, is that after doing it for a couple of years, um, what actually inspired uh, Timor um, to actually shoot one of these films himself, Profile? I'd say that again, sorry. What inspired Timor to shoot one of these types of films the himself, story. Profile. It was the, the story. It's a very, very strong story. It was a huge issue at the time because he Profile was made in 2018. It was made after searching. Um, and it's about how, um, how ISIS recruiters were mm. bringing in young women from, um, from, uh, from Europe, particularly the UK, and how they were grooming them. Yeah. Um and then and then getting them over to Syria. Um so it was it's a very, very, very important story and it's a very strong story. Uh, and this is out now? Yeah, this is out now. This is it this is in um in theatres now it's in cinemas now. Um it isn't in Liverpool, yes. You know, Liverpool, what's up with no, you? It's a really, really powerful film. It's brilliant actually. It's one of my favourites. Yeah. Uh, it's a very strong story. Mm -hmm. Has no vampires in it though. <laughs> no, no, it's not a horror story. No, it's not a horror story. Well, it is a bit horrific, like, but it's, yeah, it it's not a horror story. It's yeah. a, it's it's contemporary. You know, this. Is, yeah, it's real. Yeah. Well, you know, Joanne, I just want to thank you for coming in and uh, giving our audience a chance to uh, uh, find out a little bit more about screen life and the opportunities. Because I mean, as we both know, Liverpool is a very creative city. Um, you know, has a lot of talent here. But also what we do know is that Liverpool is rising in production scales. I mean, tax tax credits. You know, Americans are tired of, like, going to Vancouver. And that's all you see is another film being made over here, you know, and everything. And so, but it doesn't have to be a big production. It could be a small production because it sounds like um, these kind of films don't take 
a lot of, you know, the whole big trucks and everything to make. No, you know. no, we've got a great, we've got a, a really good footprint, you know, for green footprint because it's much smaller. The productions are much, much smaller. We don't hu- use huge crews. We don't need big um you, we don't need generators we don't because everything's done through a generators device. i used to work in film i'm like generators please you don't need no stinking generators no. <laughs>